Yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting week. Got a good win over Western Illinois, and then uh, had a great battle with the Michigan Wolverines at their place, and uh, ended up beating us one nothing. But I thought the performance was pretty solid by the guys, and uh, looking forward to another Big Ten week. Uh, Western Illinois was our last non-conference, and a big week for us, obviously, with Northwestern at home on the Big Ten Network tomorrow, and then a matchup against Indiana on Sunday down in Bloomington. We've got a question from Paul. Hey coach, um, obviously you're gonna look forward here this week, but can you just talk about the stretch of, of results you guys got eight games without losing? Your defense was basically impenetrable for eight games. Just talk about that. It, I'm assuming it, that style of play continued against Michigan as well. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, we've put up some really good numbers when you look at our goals against average and limiting teams opportunities. It was a uh, kind of a recirculation, the goal that Michigan scored, um, you know, which we've been fortunate to get some of those bounces go our way recently. Uh, I think overall, though, the team defending and it starts with our forwards, the work that they put in up the field, give us an opportunity to really shut down playmakers, players. Um, within within a soccer match. And, uh, you know, I don't remember how many games it had been since we haven't given up a goal until the Michigan goal. And then obviously we're scoring some goals, which is uh, great to see. You, you talk about the forwards. Is there, I mean, it's a team effort, obviously, starting from the front, but is there somebody in the back that stood out? I mean, you guys have used different goalkeepers. You've used different lineups. Uh, what's, is it just a team effort? Is that the theme overall for the defensive play? Well, you know, I think the system really fits the players that we have. And, um, you know, we have shuttled back and forth between two goalkeepers. Both of them have played well. They've uh, picked up little knocks here and there. And so we had to change them out. But I think when you look at Moritz and our captain, Zach Klansnick and, and Patrick, Yim, a fifth year senior, Ben uh -huh. Lee has been playing a lot of minutes in the back. Um, you know, those are fourth and fifth year guys that are really rock solid with their principles play. And, uh, you know, they're excited anytime they could be a part of a shutout. And, you know, up the field, you know, Anaki, Ignacy, Timmy Bialik, Arn, the rest of them, you know, a lot of other guys are, are, are pulling some really good shifts on the defensive side of the ball while we're also playing some very attractive, good soccer going forward. Um, you know, I, I can't remember how many games, you know, it seemed like two, nothing, two, nothing, two, nothing, one, nothing, four, nothing, you know, we're scoring goals as well. And that, that helps the defense feel more confident if they could pitch a shutout that our attackers are going to find a goal, or maybe even one of the defenders is going to find a goal on a set piece. Um, switch. So switching to the forwards, Andrew Akindeli hadn't, uh, reached the score sheet for a while. He gets three games in a row. He puts the goal, puts um, the ball in the net. Henry Topovin jumped in there. He's been contributing. Is, again, it's sort of like the defense. Is it? Is it everyone just kind of chipping in here for the offense? Yeah, you know, I think I mentioned it a number of weeks back. You know, we don't feel we we rely on one uh, forward. We feel like we got a great core. Uh, actually, Michael Wampler's given us some good minutes there. You know, Henry's banged a couple goals recently. Uh, Andrew was on a three-game goal-scoring streak going into the Michigan game and, you know, probably felt like he deserved one or, or had one in the Michigan game. The goalkeeper made a great save on him. Um, and Jack Finnegan as well. Um, you know, they're all, they're all capable of making plays and scoring goals. And then we've got guys out of the midfield that can help there too. You know, whether it's Timmy Bialik or Ignacy, um, you know, Inaki has four goals on the season from the number six position. So we're excited about what we're doing offensively as much as what we're doing defensively. Uh, you mentioned set pieces. Um, one of the things you notice every single game is throw-ins from Zach Klansnick from the sidelines. It's You guys have a pretty good set play there, and other teams are – you can hear them talking every single time the ball's out of bounds. They are keying on that play. Just talk about how that – has developed over the season and it, you guys have had some success with that. Yeah, we're fortunate that Zach and, and Patrick Yim can, can really throw a ball in a long way. 
But with Arn and, and Moritz, we've got two great targets. Guys have really bought in. Actually, one of the chances Andrew had was the movement he had inside the six-yard box on a long throw-in. Uh, and they are key. Uh, you know, in college soccer, the amount of goals that are scored from the run of play are usually pretty few and far between. And so set pieces, whether it's corners, whether it's free kicks, long throw-ins, it's just another opportunity to get the area with with guys making, um, you know, dynamic moves. And it, we're hard to defend in those moments. We're big, we're strong, and the guys have really worked hard on, on becoming good at that element of our play. Um. And I looked a little bit ahead this week. Obviously, it's a big week, but two Big Ten games going to Indiana and home at Northwestern. Um, if you look at the standings, which I'm sure you have, there's a pretty good battle for the Big Ten title going on right now. Um, and everyone's pretty much everyone's playing each other over the last two weeks. Can you just talk about, you know, the position you guys are in? And I mean, if you're a fan and you'd like soccer, this is going to be a great couple of weeks. No question. And, you know, we spoke briefly about it. I think it was uh, important, you know, to talk on Saturday when we got back from a long bus trip from Michigan that it's all still out in front of us. You know, it, you know, you hear baseball teams, you hear um, professional soccer teams, you know, they get to a point mathematically they're still in something if and this team loses and that team loses. You know, we've got three Big Ten games in front of us. We play a couple of the teams that are right around us. Uh, there's nine points available. Um, we expect them to be very, very difficult games. Uh, excellent programs, all three of them that we're playing, well coached. They're going to be ready to play. But we're not asking someone else to help us at this point. And I think as, a, as an athlete, that's what you look forward to. You want it to be how you perform and can you get things done instead of hoping that Ohio State loses this weekend. Um, you know, we're right there. We've put ourselves in a decent position. We expect it to be a very difficult run out to the season and then obviously into the Big Ten tournament. Um, there are nine excellent teams this year, and, and we assume that with a lot of guys coming back, graduate students. You know, Michigan had a couple 50-year seniors on the field that were – extended an extra opportunity to come back because of COVID. And there's just a lot of experience on the field for every team, us included. And uh, we're looking forward to the challenges. I know the guys are. Um, one more, I guess, for you. Tomorrow night, um, it's on Big Ten Network, but it's also Chris Mueller t-shirt night, giving away 500 of them to fans. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the impact he had on the program and has on the program right now? Um, and fans will get to wear his jersey around if they show up tomorrow night for the uh, with a T-shirt. Yeah, Chris. Chris had a phenomenal career. You know, the first two time first team All American for the University of Wisconsin and helped us achieve some great goals in 2017, winning the Big Ten tournament and moving on into the NCAA. And what he's done as a pro has been exceptional. Um, I think I said it in our last uh, press conference that he'll be moving to Europe um, in November uh, to start his career in Scotland. But, you know, Chris is someone that comes up in conversations with recruits. Um, and, uh, and we talked to our existing players about what he meant to the program and the buy-in and what he achieved over a four-year period. Um, you know, I don't think anyone will beat his 20 assists for a long time. That That is a heck of a record to have as the Big Ten all-time leading assist in one season uh, going to one of our players. And um, it'll be cool to see those replica jerseys given out. I know Chris was excited when he heard about it. Um, it was interesting before the game up at Michigan, I was chatting to the referee. He had gone and actually saw Chris's younger brother playing in a collegiate soccer game and said he couldn't believe how much he looked like Chris. At first, he thought it was Chris. And then he kind of went on to say how much he enjoyed refereeing and what a fantastic player he was. So he's never forgotten. You know, that's the referees talking to me before the game at Michigan about Chris and what he meant to the program. So we're, we're just always excited to have been involved in, you know, his development as a student athlete over four years at Wisconsin. Um, 